I don't know how to say it any clearer. No, you cannot roast marshmallows on my head. Please stop asking. So that was a quick animation that I did in Blender Grease Pencil to test out the onion skinning settings. So in this video, I'll give you a walkthrough of how those settings work. And then I'll also give you a practical example showing how I made the fire for Firestorm's head. I used that using the onion skinning settings. Now, the example won't be as polished as what you see in the final uh, cartoon just due to the amount of time it would require. But at least you can see how onion skinning will work in practice. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe and let's get started. Because here I'm in Blender and I am in 4.4.3. I don't have any special add-ons or anything you need to worry about for this demonstration. So the first thing I want to talk about is the initial settings you get when you open up a new 2D animation scene. So currently I have a scene with some things in it, but when you start your scene, you'll get the same thing I'm looking at now. The only difference is right now I do not have a grease pencil object selected. You most likely will if you start a 2D animation scene. And I did that for a reason. So if I have cube selected, you can see up here um, what toolbar options I have. And that will change once I select a grease pencil object. So now I have this added grease pencil drop down here. So I'll click on the 3D object, you can see that goes away. So this option gives you Onion skinning, which is already enabled when you create a new 2D animation scene. So if you want to turn off onion skinning for the entire overlay of the viewport, you can turn it off here. So it's just a you know checkbox. I created this scene to show you what these other options are. So if I have fade inactive layers, I want to click that on. You'll see nothing will happen. That's allowing you to fade inactive layers within a single grease pencil object. So right now I've got Suzanne selected, which is this monkey on the left. And if I go to the Grease Pencil Properties, you can see I have Suzanne Outline selected. So that is my selective layers. All of these layers are within the same Grease Pencil object. So if I turn these off, you can see that's turning those off. So now if I got Suzanne's Outline selected, and I go up here to the top, uh, right now it's at 100%. If I scroll this down, you can see everything's fading, but the outline. If I click on the square and do the same thing, everything fades, but the square. So that will help you if you want to um, not turn on or off the visibility of a layer, uh, but you can actually control it here. And I think, I don't know this for a fact, I haven't tested it, let me check. If I have that on and then I click between objects, it'll automatically apply that to those objects, yep. So you can leave that on, and as you select layers, it will fade out the other ones that aren't selected dynamically. So I'm going to turn that back on, all the way to 100, and I'll click that off. Now the next one is Fade Inactive Objects. Now this applies to uh, 3D objects. So if I click that, you can see everything's fully visible. But if I drag that down, you can see it slowly start to disappear. So if you have 3D objects in your scene, which these are, you can see as I rotate around, those are 3D objects with the line art modifier applied to them. And this little toggle right here is the fade grease pencil objects. So you'll see what's happening is with that on, and I bring this down, the line art around those 3D objects are disappearing as well. But if I turn that off and bring this down, the line art remains the same, but the actual 3D object fades out. So if I, again, circle my scene, you can see the objects aren't showing, but the line art remains. So I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to turn off inactive objects off. If you turn on Canvas, it gives you a grid that you can use to work with. And this slider, you know, controls the opacity. Now if I want to increase the size of this, I can use the scale buttons. Bring that up and across. I can use the offset to put it where I want to. I can change subdivisions to make it denser or less dense. I can click here to change the color. And then this uh, box here allows it to overlay everything in the viewport. So if I click that, you can see it's now on top of the 3D objects. If I turn it off, you can see how that works. 
So if you need a grid while you're working, drawing, you can turn that on here in case you need that. So one other thing I want to mention in this view is that these options here will not work within the render view or the wireframe view. It will work in solid view and within the material view. So again, if I turn this down, you can see both of these are fading. If I go to the render view, it's not working and it's not working wireframe. And I know this because I spent like an hour trying to figure out what was wrong with my scene. There was nothing wrong with my scene. I was just in render preview. Those options just don't work within the render preview. So that's everything for this part. And again, if you have onion skinning on, you want to completely turn it off. You can just uncheck that box. Okay, so I'll turn this scene off and I'll turn on this grease pencil object I have here. You can see the onion skinning working now. If I go up to this layer and turn off onion skinning, you can see those are no longer there. You don't know what onion skinning is. It is the ability to look at drawings prior to the existing frame you're looking at or later to the existing frame you're looking at. So when I turn this on, you can see I have these ghosted or images that are more faded than the main one. So if I click that off, you can see those go away. So you'll want to keep this on. Let me go ahead and turn these off. So you want to keep that on if you're using onion skinning. Now the actual controls for onion skinning are down here in the grease pencil properties. They're right here. They have their own little section. So let me click on my grease pencil object. You can see I have keyframes here. Now you can see my starting drawing is here on one, and you can see I have three drawings after that. If I go to two, now you can see I have a drawing prior to that and three in front of it. If I go to the middle one, you can now see I have three drawings behind it and three drawings in front of it. So within this mode, you can change frames. So frames shows the frames in the range determined by the before and after settings, which are down here. So I can choose how many before and how many after, and these can be different numbers. So I can choose one for that one and three for the other one. Keyframes shows the keyframes in that range, and then selected shows the ones you have manually selected keyframes in the dope sheet. So I'm gonna leave this on keyframes for now. If you look at the onion skinning section, there's a filter by type dropdown. You can see that has Various options including keyframe, breakdown, moving, hold, extreme, jitter, and generated. So you can choose to filter your onion skinning by those types of keyframes. So if I look over here at my timeline, I can left click and drag on this last set, hit right mouse button. You can see down here I can assign them a certain designation that matches the filter types in the onion skinning. So if I go to um, Breakdown, you can see that changes the color to match that one. And let me change this one to breakdown. And this one to breakdown. So that only shows them if I have them selected. So you can see the yellow ones are keyframes and the blue ones are breakdowns. So I can go over here to filter type, go to breakdown. You can see as I scroll through here and then let off my button, it'll just show the breakdown keyframes. So if you organize your keyframes this way, then this gives you an option to really filter by those, depending on what you want to see in your onion skinning. You can see that if I decrease this to two and two, I lose the uh, last keyframe at the beginning and the one at the end. I can change the opacity. I can also change the custom color. So currently it's green. If I want to make red my prior keyframes, I can do that. And then if I want to make green my future keyframes, I can change that here. I just kind of feel like that's a little easier to understand than the default colors. Fade is the onion skinning settings are fading the further away they are from the keyframe you're currently at. So if I uncheck fade, you can see they're all the same. If I check it again, you can see they're uh, more saturated the closer they are to the keyframes you have the timeline on. Now show start frame, that works on loop animations where it shows the first key frame as a ghost when you're on the last frame of your animation. I don't have examples set up for that and haven't really used that before, but that is an option there to keep in mind. So that's the basics of using onion skinning within Blender Grease Pencil. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now I wanna do a demo of how I did the Firestorm flame on his head. So here I'm in the Firestorm drawing. You can see what that looks like. So I'm actually gonna make the hair a different 
or the hair, the fire, a different grease pencil object. So I'm in object mode. I'll hit shift A, grease pencil, blank. I want to come out of the 2D animation viewport and you can see how this looks. I'm going to take the grease pencil object and bring it back a bit. So I know now that it is behind his head. I'm going to rename it fire. I'm going to hit zero on my numpad to go back into my uh, camera view. So now when I draw this, I know it'll be behind his head, which is what I want. Okay, before I draw my first line, I'm going to turn off the fill so I can see that better. And I've changed it to orange. So let me go to, let's see, frame zero. Go to draw and I've got the fire selected for his hair, head. And I'm going to start here and bring this around. Okay, now if I turn back on fill, you can see what that looks like. So then if I go to three, and I've got grease onion skinning on. So when I start to draw here, that will fade out. So you, you know, it'll be an onion skin drawing. I'm gonna go back to my material and turn off fill so I can see it a little better. So I'm on three. If I draw this again, you can see how that fades out. So I want it to kind of mostly stay the same. So it kind of retains its volume, but I do want it to be a little wilder. So it moves around. Let me go to six. So currently my onion skinning is on to see two frames before. I'll leave that as is. Let me draw the next one. Okay, I'm going to go to three frames ahead to nine. I'm going to start bringing this down a little bit. Twelve. Fifteen. I'm going to start bringing it back up. Okay, so if I turn my fill back on, let's see what this looks like. See, I got a drawing messed up there. So obviously you would clean this up for animation, but I wanted to just give you an example of a practical way of using onion skinning while you're working on something. So if you found this video helpful, if so, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.